from Craft Me A Car and I love crafting for the crafter and that is you. So I've been dying to play with this die. It's from Life's Craft and it's these frames and I have two cards to share with you today. It has so many possibilities, so many things that you could put in these little windows. So I know I want to use some of my pressed flowers. So I bring out this paper that is wood-like. I like to make these ahead of time to have them on hand, but they're shiny and I'm looking for something that is matte. I want it more rustic looking. So I just bring in my coffee and this is just diluted coffee and I keep it in this little jar. Um, it's just instant coffee with a little bit of water. You want it dark um, just to have it on hand. But uh, this is not the look I'm going for. I want something a little lighter. So I bring in this little container and I pour a little bit of this concentrated coffee on here and I dilute it a little bit more with some water. Then I go ahead and I brush it onto my cardstock. And now that I have this lighter color, I think this will work better. And I just go ahead and I brush the whole piece. I do want to create some strokes, some lines like that of wood. So I go ahead and I grab some directly from the jar since it's more concentrated, it's darker. And I brush it in different directions. Sometimes I um, go and I do like an X and then I just brush it on and this will give us the look, a more realistic look like of uh, wood. You could see here the different strokes. Bring in the heat tool and just help speed up the drying process. It is a little warped. I think that um, I should have taped it down to a board, but it's okay. This will work just fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these two dies out of the middle part of this wood-like paper. And the Celebrate die comes from this Sizzix die set. I bring in some glue onto my card base and I stick this wood-like piece on top of it. With a crafter's knife, just go ahead and cut off the excess. I'm going to use paper from The Paper Studio. This is a brand that is found at Hobby Lobby and I really like this collection. I think it has beautiful images, very vintage-like, which is what I'm looking for. Let me just flip through quickly so you could kind of get an idea of what this has. I pick a piece and I cut it down to be a little bit smaller than my card base. With some vintage photo, I go around and I distress the edges of this piece. Then bringing in some liquid glue, I go ahead and I stick this piece onto my card base that now has the wood-like cardstock. I want these frames popped up, so I'm going to go ahead and bring in some foam adhesive and just cutting little strips. I go ahead and I add these to the edges of my frames, applying a little bit of liquid glue just to assure that with time they do not fall off. Using this precision tip bottle, I go ahead and I add glue to the Celebrate. Now I bring in my dried flowers. These are pressed, you know, <laughs> I've been enjoying pressing these flowers a lot. I want to put these in each one of these frames. So I pick two colors, but I would like for them to stand out a bit more. So I am going to go ahead and bring in some acrylic paint and paint the background just so that the background is a lot lighter than my cardstock. This will help these flowers stand out more. So I do all four frames. Just by adding a little bit of acrylic paint, it will help lighten this background. Now bringing in my flowers, I go ahead and with a pencil, I mark where about is the center of the flower. I go ahead and I dab some dots of silicone glue. This is a hot glue gun. And I'm going to let these cool off a bit because these are going to help my flowers pop up. They will be creating some dimension for them. And of course, I don't learn my previous lesson. I go ahead and I add some glue directly on the back of the flower. Um, it is best to add first the glue onto your card stock, then bring in the flower. So that's what I do with the remaining three flowers. It's just easier to handle since the flowers are so delicate. When you add the glue onto the flower first, it tends to stick everywhere since they're so delicate. I cut some corners off camera and I also decide to add some white acrylic paint just to lighten them up. I want these to stand out more. 
bring in my card base, I go ahead and I add my four corners with regular liquid glue and of course using the help of my tweezers. One, two, three, and four. I love adding sequin to my cards to make them happy and pop up just a little bit more. So that's exactly what I do next. You don't have to add much sequin, just a little bit, just to give it that little pop. And I bring in this tool, which is a little bit more fancy than the wax pencil. This has a wax tip to it, but it works the same as the pencil. It's just a little fancier. And this is our card number one. Easy, quick, and simple. So for my second card, I wanna continue working with my wrapping paper. <laughs> I love working with it. And the idea I had is to put a different scene of balloons in each one of these squares. Now this card base is a little smaller. This is an A2 size card. Bringing in my embossing powder, my embossing ink, and my heat tool, I go ahead and I emboss in black all four sides of my card base. This is going to be creating a frame for my wrapping paper. I would love to see the face of all crafters the first time that that they melt embossing powders. I remember I was like, whoa, <laughs> it's so cool. Creates a plastic-like coat on your paper. It's just amazing. It makes it look more professional. And for the layer that's going to be going on top of my card base, I add some multimedia glue, only because we are working with slick surfaces and we need a glue that will grab onto these slick surfaces. And I disperse it using this acrylic makeup applicator. <laughs> I go ahead and I stick my balloon wrapping paper on. Yoo so I want these frames to match the black frame. So I go ahead and I die cut these frames out of regular cardstock. And I do the same procedure. I add some black embossing powder so that these frames will have the same look as our black frame, which is going to be shiny. Okay, so now I bring in some wrapping paper and I pick different pieces of these balloons and I try to pick different colors just for variation. Adding some multimedia glue because this wrapping paper is very slick. I go ahead and I pick different pieces of the balloons and I add the frame right on top. Then with a crafter's knife, I go ahead and I cut around the edges of each frame. This was kind of fun uh, looking for different images that would fit inside these frames. I feel like these frames could be used for so many things. I kind of want to get some faces of my niece. She loves making faces and I want to get different expressions and just stick them on these frames and uh, make a birthday card for her. I want to lighten the background of this wrapping paper because I want these four frames to stand out. Um, there are different ways you can lighten a background and you could sand it down, you can add some vellum, and you can also do what I'm doing here, which is bringing in a little bit of white acrylic paint. <laughs> Dilute it with a little bit of water, grab a brush, and just stroke on. You could look at it a different ways. It could be more hip, it could be more artistic. It could be more rustic. It's a great look. Go ahead and bring in my frames here and I stick them down, adding some foam adhesive. I want a happy birthday. So I go ahead and I die cut this happy birthday. Using in some prize ribbon, I go ahead and I ink this sentiment and then bringing in again the multimedia glue. I go ahead and I stick this sentiment down onto my card. I couldn't get the sentiment straight, so I go ahead and I bring in a T ruler to help me straighten it out. And voila, it did the trick. And I consider this a finished card. I went in and I tried adding some sequin, but it didn't need it. Um, the It has little silver stars and the space was too small and it was just looking too crowded. So I decided not to add them. And this is my finished card. I appreciate you stopping by and I hope that I can inspire you to create and be happy. <laughs> Thank you so very much for joining me. I invite you to subscribe. If you haven't already done so, hit the notification bell, like, and comment. All these things help my channel out tremendously. And it also, of course, motivates me to bring you more crafty content in the future. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.
fun, a bubble. Oh. <laughs>